Yes! <laughs> so I just filmed all this once and my microphone wasn't turned on so you, there was no sound at all. Anyway, <laughs> what's up YouTube? My name's Quickie, welcome back to the channel. Um, I've had some deliveries, posties bin. So I've got three more of these um, quick change tool posts for Chuck. Uh, I'm just finding that as I'm you know, using more tools and making my own and all that, so I'm just getting fed up of having to keep swapping them out in the holders and set them all up again. So basically all the tools I use on a regular basis are just going to go in their own holder. I am going to stick a shelf up across the top at some point just so I can grab it and stick it on. But we've got three more of them. Uh, got the springs to do the um, uh, return spring jobby thing for the rear brake so they'll do the do they're quite stiff as well which is nice um some bar end indicators which is cool a bit of a bargain um i've got a domino quick action throttle um these normally go for like 120 quid i've got this one um for 36 pound off ebay so happy days that i've had one on the blade they're brilliant i love them and that's where it all goes a bit pete tong um, I wanted to get some chamfer tool in so I can set one up to do an inside chamfer and one for an outside. This is this is supposed to be 12 mil and it just and it's tiny. What is it? 8 mil. Why send me an 8 mil one? Um, I probably just ordered the wrong thing, I guess, because I've been doing that recently. So anyway, they'll be going back and I'll be getting the different ones. <laughs> because they're no use to me at all um but anyway today i'm carrying on with this because i want to i want to square up that bit of alley and get it sorted um i did break a tap off in it i'll put a picture up such as so you can see and have a giggle at me i even took it into work on saturday because that's when i was last working thinking oh the tool room be able to get that out doddle yeah the tool room shut on a saturday <laughs> Um, there are a couple of things I can try. We're going to try the easy ways first. And if that don't work, he's going back in Brian and he's coming out. By hook or by crook, he's coming out. <laughs> right, let's get on with it then. Right, excuse the mess. I haven't tidied up since I was I was last doing this. <laughs> he's still filthy. Lit. Right, what have I got? Um, pom, pom, pom. Right, I've got one of these automatic centre punch jobbies. There is a little bit of the tap sticking out. And I'm wondering if I can just get it rotating a bit. Come on. Yeah, you ain't shifting. <laughs> right, I was hoping that was going to work. Um... What else have I got? I haven't got a centre punch. Well, that might work. All right. Um, bum, bum, bum. I just want to try and get the flaming thing rotated. If I can wind it out even a little bit, then I'll stand a chance of... No, you're just breaking off now, aren't you? Oh, bloody hell. Right. That didn't work. And it's a really small hole, and it's all jaggedy. And the jaggedy bit is down in the hole. So it's not like I can flat it off and drill it, because it's just going to wander everywhere. Um, right. What else have I got? Ooh, this might... I don't know, it could be tool abuse. <laughs> that might work. Uh, I don't know. I've got some die grinder bits. Um, which is like dead dinky. Like really dinky. I mean, they're just ridiculously small. I am wondering if that might do it. Um, 
See, I don't even think it goes down that far. I don't want to just drill another hole in it. It's got enough holes. It's just one's bunged up. Um, what would be a good one? See, that ain't got anything on the end. I really want something with something on the end. Right. This could all end up horrible. Um, in the Dremel kit, I've got a tiny little die grinder. It's a three mil shaft on it with a smaller ball. That's a five mil hole. So I ain't gonna be able to go much bigger than that. I do have some bigger ones. However, it's not gonna get all the way down. So, um, I've set it very slightly off center because it's like three flutes on a, on a tap. And all I'm gonna try and do is peck away at it with this, I'm probably just gonna snap it. Um, but I just wanna try and get the flaming thing out. Right, let's... Uh shoved a bigger um, round die grinder bit in there just because the other one was deflecting all over the place and all I'm trying to do is to make a divot in the top of it you just dish it out slightly um, it's a three fluted tap and I'm hoping I can shove a three mil cold cobalt drill through the middle and take the core out but I don't know we'll have to see <laughs> <sighs> should have gone slower and steadier is what I should have done but I did I want to be about there really don't you um, yeah Sam's gone off on her holidays today so I'm now officially on my own for a week which sucks tend not to function very well on my own. Um, she's only been gone like eight hours. And I'm missing her like mad already. Um, didn't get any sleep at all last night, so I was in my workshop doing other odds and sods at, I don't know, 5.30 this morning. <laughs> Obviously cleaning up the mill wasn't one of them. No, I just had some orders to get out and stuff like that. But I'm off to me work later on. Don't finish that until 11 p.m. tonight. So today is going to be a long ass day. All right, let's um, see how we go. Admitting defeat on this one for now. Um, got a little four mil end cutter, which will probably be long enough if I could get it in, but the trouble is it keeps wandering. And I don't want to screw up the, the top bit of it. I mean, the, the set screws are going to be set in quite a long way. But as soon as this makes contact, it starts to move about and stuff. And I can't, I can't do a plunge mill on it it's just not it's not happening so i'm going to admit to feet on that one and i'm going to take it into the tool room because they must have got taps and stuff out they've probably got a doicky to do it i don't know um i'll have a chat with brett and see see if he can help me out but that is bloody annoying see i just don't want to drill it again and stick yet another hole in it i'd rather not um because that one's where i want it to be so, he is coming in to work with me. Um, I might give it a clean up before I show the fellas in the tool room. Because <laughs> they'll be picking up on everything. Um, but we shall see. 
hopefully you don't get the bugger out. Right, today's now Tuesday. I took this in to go and see Brett and stuff. He's awesome in there. They've got all the toys. Um, all my little efforts was all the obvious stuff to try. Um, but he's got a spark eroder, which is awesome. Big old bit of kit. I don't think I'll ever get one. But uh, I've never seen one before. Um, he explained it all. And basically, he's got, he's got like a... It's got a table like Brian does, so you can line stuff up and whatnot. But instead of having a... Uh, a milling bit or a drill or whatever in the top it's just got an electrode um and all that happened yeah you know, i think he was only running it on like six amps or something but it creates a tiny little arc that just eats its way through the metal that you're trying to get rid of and the whole thing's flooded with paraffin you know similar as you would do a coolant system on on a mill um and that just carries all the debris and stuff away so he managed to get the core of this tap out and literally the core is like three mil if that um and by the time we finished we pulled the last little bit out and two of the two of the flutes were still stuck to the stuck to one another it is really really accurate don't make a mess at all and it got this done in minutes so i've got my set screws in which is sweet and they all thread down quite nice so that's cool um i did make a cock up as you saw in the other video when I did this slot. Basically, it is a tiny bit big. Um, thing is that the, the cutting edge needs to be on the center line. Grub screws is this side. So they're essentially pushing the tool away for however much I cocked it up by. <laughs> so what I'm doing, I've got, um, I've got two sets of feeler gauges. Uh, one I use for measuring stuff. The other one is just shim stock. And it's brilliant because it's written on there what it is. What are we? Uh, 0.18 mil. <laughs> and if I was to shove that in the back there, like that, and then my tool is properly snug. Go on. Go on. You know you want to. <laughs> it will get, there we go. Like that. That's the fit that I should have got when I machined it, and I didn't. <laughs> so now I could do these grub screws up, and it's not going to force the tool away, which is sweet. I've also decided to go for a different tool. I'm going to grind down the other end. I didn't like that left-handed turning tool because it's got a wobble to it. So I've got some more of this stuff. Um, uh, all I'm going to do is grind that end down and, and make my cutting tool. So that's what I'm doing now. Right, so I've just dressed the wheel up with uh, one of these little flat jobbies. I think it's got like diamonds or something encrusted onto it, but it just it just makes it flat basically. Um, I'm also using my markup blue. <laughs> oh no, it's stupid, but for me it just sort of works basically. So you can like cover an end like that. And then when you're grinding, obviously you're taking that off so you can just see exactly where you've gotten to and how far you've got to go and are you level and all that sort of stuff. It just makes it more helpful. Plus, I tend to just put a dob on the corner that I'm trying to get tight. <laughs> you know, the cutting point. Um, just so I don't forget where it is and cock it all up. Right, let's... Uh, right, a cup of water to keep it cool. So he's all done. It's not my best grind ever. I need to get another wheel. That one's getting a bit on the small side. But it's tipped down that way. It's got the point in it and everything else. So we should be good. I've, I've stoned any little burrs and stuff off of it. And I've put the tiniest of radiuses on the cutting point. So he is going to go in like that. Is that the right way around? I've done that before. <laughs> Uh, shim will go in the back of this. Come on. Come on. There we go. Get him out of the way. And we're in. Huh. 
Right, so he goes in a 20 mil collet. about well the closest I've got to what I can what I really want uh, 485 that'll do right sweet something in the voice and we are in business <laughs> oh bit of numpty oh I've been such a numpty um, total travel of this bed 316 mil <clears throat> however the tool hangs out a little bit <laughs> oh god why did I think of that so from there, let me show you. I can't start a cut halfway through, and if I wind it all the way along, <laughs> it's overhanging this end as well. And I can't start behind it, because of where the vise is at the minute. So what I could do is kind of come in from the back and then go along. So I get that first cut, which is probably what I'm gonna do, but in order to do it, I'm going to need to reposition stuff. Actually, I wonder, could I come at it from that way? Oh, hello, we might be in here. It's been you around. I need to adjust my gibs, that's tight. Right, we might be in. I might not have cocked it up. Ignore everything I just said. <laughs> right, so ignoring all the cocking about that I've got to do, and that I'm probably going to end up making a slightly smaller one. <laughs> I'll get a picture of this before we have a go at it. Um, all I'm going to do is mill in from the side, uh, and then we're going to come across this way, and we'll just do it all in one go. Um... To do this one though, I'm probably going to need to reposition the vise, which is a pain, but we can probably get around that. I just want to give it a go and see what's what. So, bear with me a minute. I'm going to have a stab at this. All right. <laughs> Good is that finish? I am bad. There are some swell marks on it and stuff, I know. I only took 0.1 out of it. But if you compare that to that, or that, <laughs> I'm happy with that one. That's going to do the two. I am going to make a smaller one as well. Just because that one's a bit. It's limiting on where you can put it on the table and stuff. So if I was to do one, maybe 20 mil smaller in diameter as well, 
that would be handy. Now I know that when you buy a set, that's why you get a set of three. <laughs> so, that's the big one. <laughs> anyway, um, I've had this turn up as well. Let me show you. I don't know who it was wrapped all this up, but I bet it was one of those mean kids. He used to give you a Christmas present with a smile on his face because he's gone over the whole bloody thing in sellotape. <laughs> <laughs> so this is my tilting table. Um, basically you undo these uh, bolts one either side. Ooh. There you go. And you can tilt it, it's got degree markers on it goes 45 degrees that way to 45 degrees that way and you can shove t-slots in it and clamp stuff to it and everything else so while i'm doing the slopey bits on the yokes the yokes is going to get clamped to this and then i can tilt the whole thing to sort of machine it where i want it's all covered in oil which is nice i'm probably going to have it apart just to see if there's any of that varnish stuff on there but the whole thing is drenched in oil which is lovely right what size t-slots are you I'm liking this, this is good. This is very good actually. I was grubbing about looking for one. I think I got this one for 180, 185 quid, something like that. But you look at some of them and you start reading the descriptions. Like there's one with a crank handle and stuff so you can adjust it and lock it off and everything else instead of this one where you've got to do it all by hand. But when you start going through the descriptions and it's coming out with stuff like improved finish for better results, you start thinking, why can't you just say precision ground? That's what I want. <laughs> I want it flat. Um, but yeah, I think we're gonna we're we're gonna be in there. That's gonna that's gonna do it. So um, I am gonna need to monkey about my vice and reposition it. I have been goofing about. If I move the vice forwards by one of the slots, um, so it overhangs a little bit, then I can get stuff done. Um, either way, I can trill this up and square it off. Um, and then basically I don't need the fly cutter anymore, uh, not to do the yokes themselves. Um, so, you know, it's no real biggie, is it? Um, what I'm going to do now, today is Tuesday, I'm working today, I'm working tomorrow, and then I've got Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday off, and Sam's not here because she's on her holidays, going red and crispy with the most stupid tan lines you've ever seen in your life because she got a new bikini. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a halter neck one with big strap marks. Um, so, yeah, I can take the mickey out of her when she gets back with that lot. Um, but what it means is that I can I can spend tomorrow morning, I just want to, I'm going to take the yolks home and I'm just going to check them again. I'm going to measure everything again. Um, just because, well, it's Andy's fault, basically. <laughs> the man is a plum, he is a goon, and he's not getting a Christmas card this year. <laughs> it all stems from one little comment oh everything sorted out and then he chips in you have thought about rake and trail and stuff haven't you <laughs> i hate that man so much <laughs> the grief he's caused me what he's talking about is um offset yokes basically so you can look at a bike and you think well the forks is just parallel with the steering stem isn't it and you look at it and you think, yeah, it probably is. Well, it ain't necessarily. <laughs> um, the old uh, 99R1 that I had and the 2000, um, they was all straight yokes, didn't have offset yokes, but it was screaming out for a set of offset jobbies. Um, and what that basically means is that the your fork leg comes down here and your steering stem comes down here, but you can offset them. So the angle of this hole could be different to the angle of this hole. 
Um, with the R1, what I found was it like if you're trail braking or really having at it and getting on the power early, if, you, if you're getting on the power early or you're trail braking into a corner, the bike wants to set up a bit. And then when you come off the brakes or, you know, slacken off the throttle a little bit, it will drop back into the corner. Um, the way we got around it was just by dropping the yokes down the forks by five mil. But if you've got an old R1, brilliant thing to try. And it is only five mil. Don't go any more than that. Um, but that's a prime candidate for offset yokes. I'm not going to explain it all. There's loads of videos out there from much smarter fellas than me um, that could tell you what it's all to do with and how it works and everything else. But basically it affects the rake and trail of the bike, which affects its handling and its steering and its braking and everything. You know, just the stability of the bike, basically. So he chipped up with this. I spent bloody ages, ages and ages measuring this. I've had everything down each of these holes that you can imagine. I've got a little vernier protractor job here. I've got a digital one and everything else. Ended it up as I um, set it in the, um, uh, set it on the bed of Brian and I ran an indicator um, down these, these bores and the, the, they're all exactly cock on. It's not like one is at a different degree to another one. So, and that was the best way I found doing it. Um, Cause it's like, well, I don't know, it looks flat. Is it flat? <laughs> I went down so many rabbit holes trying to figure that out. And this brings me on to the big worry that I've got. Um, it's not so much the machining stuff. I'm quite happy with Brian. I think, you know, we're, we're getting on. And, you know, I know I know what he likes and what he doesn't like and all that sort of stuff. And he's set up nicely now. And, you know, I'm getting some brilliant finishes and stuff as well. Um, it's the measuring of it. Just the measuring of this to make something else that is going to fit exactly. That's the thing. The, the getting the holes on dimension and everything else, I can just take my time. I'm all right with the telescoping ball cages and all that sort of stuff. Um, so, you know, I can, I can get decent measurements with that. But it's like centre to centre of that. And then centre to centre of those two. You know, that's the sort of thing that I'm just worrying about basically so i'm taking this home and basically everything i've got in here that i can measure stuff with um and i'm just going to double check stuff and then when i come back tomorrow he is going to go in the mill i'm going to square it all up and everything else and then i'm going to indicate off everything with the dro and just double check what i've got because i do not want to cock it up <laughs> so i will probably do I'll, I'll probably show you some of that actually because it could be interesting it could help someone but that's what my plans is tomorrow so there's going to be a few videos this week try not to laugh too much i am still finding my way and learning but i'm having a lot of fun doing it actually it's really good so anyway that's where i'm leaving it thank you ever so much for watching we will see you again on the next one laters <laughs>